Are you thinking about getting a Boston Terrier or do you already have one and you're curious what is the common cause of death within the Boston Terrier breed? In this video, I'm going to cover the three most common causes of death and be sure to stay to the end of each one of those because I'm going to share with you some tips on how you can prolong their life coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of bostonterriersociety.com, and over here is Bella, my Boston of over 10 years. She likes to sit in front of her window. And today what I wanna cover are the three common causes of death within the Boston Terrier breed. So this information is actually an article found on my website, and I'll leave that in the show notes below if you wanna go check out the references. But Dr. Addie Reinhardt had written the article, and what I wanted her to do is just highlight, you know, what are the most common ways that Boston Terriers end up dying. And I think that's really good for owners to know just so they can, you know, spot it out and be asking their vet questions related to this. In this video, I went ahead and broke it down to the least common to the most common. And once again, be sure to stay till the end of each one of those because I'm just going to show you some tips that she recommends in the article on what you can do to help either spot it early or to try to help increase just the vitality of your Boston Terrier. So coming in at number three, is infectious disease. About 6% of Boston Terriers pass away from this, and this includes diseases like parvovirus, rabies, heartworm disease, as well as Lyme disease. And according to one study that she cites, is it's actually more common for younger Boston Terriers to pass away from these type of infectious diseases than older Boston Terriers. And to me, that kind of makes sense just because an older dog is gonna have probably, I mean, this is me with no medical background, but more than likely a better way to fight off those type of diseases if it happens to encounter one. There's really three ways that you can kind of combat these type of diseases within a dog. Number one is regular vaccinations. And this is something you want to talk to your vet about every time you see them, you know, what type of vaccinations need to be done and when is my Boston Terrier due for one. Number two, putting them on some sort of heartworm prevention. And number three, putting them on some sort of flea and tick prevention. Bella's here, we do that every single month. So the second most common cause of death within the Boston Terrier is actually cardiovascular disease. And this comes in at about 13 to 19% of Bostons actually die from this, which is really interesting because, I mean, heart disease is a common thing that people die from as well. So what is heart disease? It can be caused by a variety of different issues, including heart valve degeneration, irregular heart rate, and heart muscle disease. So there are a lot of signs of different cardiovascular and heart diseases. I mean, it really runs the gamut. So as far as this list, this is something that you just wanna you know, notice, and if you see something, go ahead and ask your vet, but this is pretty broad. These would include difficulty breathing, coughing, easily tiring when exercising, overall decreased activity, which once again, I think this is funny because look at Bella here. A lot of decreased activity, panting, weight loss, loss of appetite, as well as passing out. So those would be the type of signs on whether or not your Boston Terrier has some sort of cardiovascular or heart disease. Once again, it kind of runs the gamut, but just like anything, if your Boston's doing something unusual that you've never seen before, absolutely call your vet and see what's wrong. There are services like pop.com, which I'll leave in the show notes. If you wanna to talk to a veterinarian 24 seven, you can actually reach out to them anytime and you talk to an actual veterinarian who can get you answers. So that's something you can look into if for some reason your vet doesn't offer some sort of hotline. So what can you do to help kind of prevent cardiovascular disease or at least lessen the chances that your Boston's gonna get it or that you can catch it early. So there's really two things that you can do. Number one is regular checkups. Basically, if you have a Boston under the age of eight years old, an annual checkup is okay. If you have a Boston Terrier above eight years old, they really need to be going to the vet twice a year. And that's something that we just recently implemented with Bella because I didn't even know that. She's 10 years old now, but after talking to several vets here on the YouTube channel and doing my own research, yes, if they're above eight years of age, they need to be going to the vet which really makes sense because, you know, as far as human years and dog years, now that Bella's basically a senior dog, you know, somebody in their 60s might go to the doctor, just their primary care physician, more often than 
a six-year-old, right? So same concept. When you're younger, you probably don't need to see the doctor as often as when you're older, just for those regular checkups. The second thing that you can do is maintain an ideal body weight for your dog. Now it's completely different from every Boston Terrier because I've seen Boston Terriers weighing 15 pounds, Bella here weighs 23 pounds. So this is something you're gonna have to work out with your veterinarian to see what the ideal weight is for your Boston. But maintaining that is gonna help them at least reduce their risk of heart disease. So the number one cause of death within the Boston Terrier breed is cancer. Nearly 30% of all Boston Terriers will pass away from this, which it's kind of interesting because every dog breed is similar to this. So I found a study in the National Library of Medicine and it was titled Domestic Dogs and Cancer Research. But it talks about this, that basically 50% of all older dogs are gonna develop cancer and that one in four are actually gonna pass away from it. So no matter the dog breed, chances of them getting cancer is very high. Some signs of cancer, there's a whole list. Once again, just like the cardiovascular disease, it is a wide ranging list, but I'm just gonna run through them for you. So number one is weight loss. If you see your Boston have any type of lumps and bumps, decreased appetite, coughing, difficulty breathing, if they're lethargic, vomiting, diarrhea, limping, or seizures. This is just to name a few. So once again, kind of like with the cardiovascular disease, if you see something that is not normal, meaning your Boston Terrier hasn't been doing that, whether it's limping or all of a sudden has a lump, you need to speak with your veterinarian immediately just to have them assess to see what it is. This is gonna give you peace of mind knowing that, hey, I've had my Boston checked out, my vet says they're good, so preventative medicine is always the key. So here are the three things you can do to help either spot cancer early or help prevent it. Number one is just like I mentioned, early detection. Going to those annual checkups, having your vet feel around your Boston Terrier, or if you have an older Boston doing those biannual checkups will at least help spot cancer in its early form. And that's the best time to actually go ahead and try to fight the cancer. The second thing that you can do is if you're not planning on breeding your female Boston Terrier, if you had them spayed at a younger age, it actually helps reduce the risk of mammary cancer. And then number three, this is just my personal opinion. I mean, making sure that your Boston Terrier is living a healthy lifestyle. So what does that mean? It simply means make sure you're giving them 30 to 60 minutes of exercise every single day. If you happen to be a smoker, try not to smoke around your Boston Terrier. I mean, just like you wouldn't smoke in front of your kids, you shouldn't be doing that with your Boston Terrier. The same with like table scraps and junk food, things of that nature. You wanna to try to limit that or give it to them, not at all, because it gives them stinky farts, but limit that if you do, and that's actually gonna help reduce, or at least it's gonna give them that healthy lifestyle to hopefully reduce the risk of cancer. Once again, that's my personal opinion. Okay, question of the day. If you own a Boston Terrier, sometimes you've owned more than one, what did your Boston Terrier pass away from? Leave it in the comments below. If you can give a little bit of detail, that'll just help shed some light with people that are coming to this video who might be thinking about getting a Boston, or maybe they have a Boston Terrier already, and it'll just give them some things to watch out for when their Boston Terrier you know, gets a little older. Once again, this is an article that Dr. Addie Reinhardt had written on the bostonterriersociety.com website. You're gonna be able to check that out in the show notes if you wanna go ahead and read over the article. If you wanna learn more about Boston Terriers, definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from us. Otherwise, if you wanna see other health-related videos about Boston Terriers, you can check out that playlist here or you can check out one of my latest videos here. Otherwise, until next time, life is better with a Boston.